Good morning and welcome this morning to St. Mary's Hamilton Village, the Episcopal Church at the University of Pennsylvania, coming to you from our Facebook page. We're so glad to have you with us this morning as we celebrate the 18th Sunday after Pentecost with our service of morning prayer with sermon and music. A big thank you to our guest preacher today, the very Reverend Canon Gordon Reed, longtime friend of St. Mary's and the Dean of the Schuylkill Deanery here in the Diocese of Pennsylvania. A big thank you also to all of the worship volunteers and staff who made this video possible today. I hope that you will join us following our service today, following the, the final hymn and the postlude for our Zoom coffee hour. The information to connect to this Zoom coffee hour is available in the comments to this video. We begin with an opening hymn. I hope that you will sing along as the lyrics are provided. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. 
Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. We'll say together the Venite with the Antiphon. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Psalm 80, verses 7 to 14. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You cast out the nations and planted it. You prepared the ground for it. It took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered by its shadow, and the towering cedar trees by its boughs. You st stretched out its tendrils to the sea and its branches to the river. Why have you broken down its wall so that all who pass pluck off its grapes? The wild boar of the forest has ravaged it and the beasts of the field have grazed upon it. Turn now, O God of hosts, and look down from heaven. Behold and tend this vine, preserve what your right hand has planted. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the fifth chapter, beginning with the first verse. Let me sing for my beloved, my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill, he dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed up out of wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall and it shall be trampled down. 
I will make it a waste. It shall be not pruned or hoed. It shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. And the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed. Righteousness, but heard a cry. Here ends the reading. A song of the wilderness, we'll say it together. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weary hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to the anxious, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God coming with judgment to save you. Then shall the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf be unstopped. Then shall the lame leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The ransomed of God shall return with singing with everlasting joy upon their heads. Joy and gladness shall be theirs and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Epistle of Paul to the Philippians, the third chapter, beginning with the fourth verse. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as, as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus had, has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Here ends the reading. We'll say together the glory. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, the 21st chapter, beginning with the 33rd verse. Jesus said, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, 
and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? And they said to Jesus, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. Here ends the reading. Hello, this is the first time I have preached to a machine before, but it may not be the last with this plague going on. So I'm so glad to be back in St. Mary's, even if it's only virtually, because I love coming to St. Mary's and um, glad to speak to all my friends in the congregation there and those who are able to watch online. And so in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The lessons today have all been about the vineyard, and about the Lord planting a vineyard, and about the very sad result, usually, where the laborers have all either misunderstood what they're supposed to do, or even rebelled against the master of the vineyard, who's always portrayed as a, a goody, uh, as the uh, Lord God Almighty is supposed to be. And the picture of a vineyard is one which goes straight through the Old Testament and the New Testament into the life of the church, because the symbolism, of course, is of the uh, earth bringing forth the grapes, with no effort from man except to get the ground ready. God does the work. And then again, man takes over and by uh, fermenting grapes produces the wine, which as the psalmist says, maketh glad the heart of man and of woman too, of course, these days. The whole symbolism therefore is man and God working together people and God working together. And this is the octave, or we're in the octave, of the Feast of St. Michael and All Angels. And therefore, I'd like to sort of connect the vineyard metaphor with the work of the Holy Angels, because that's sometimes a stumbling block for lots of Christians who either think we're nuts um, to bother about angels and all that. They sort of equate them with um, werewolves and fairies. But again, the scripture, Old and New Testament, 
is packed with references to the work of the angels and especially the work of the angels in bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the harvest, or in the case of the vineyard, bringing in the grapes. Um, there's a wonderful poem by Alice Maynell called Christ in the Universe. And it's, it's, all, it's science fiction in a sense because it postulates the fact that this vast universe of ours, and we, we know it's getting, or we are understanding it's getting bigger and bigger every time we look around. We're like one grain of sand on a beach. That's what we first thought. And then we realized that there are a billion beaches. Each galaxy is a billion stars and there's a billion galaxies. Now, of course, I'm making all that up, but you know, the whole thing is expanded so that we live on one tiny little bit of one planet in a very strange bit of the universe. And so we've got to expand our idea of what God can do. We've got to have a bigger God. And I'd like to read you just a verse from um, this Christ in the universe. As I say, it's by Alice Maynell, who died, uh, was born in 1847, I don't know when she died, but she starts, with this ambiguous earth, his dealings have been told us. These abide, the signal to a maid, the human birth, the lesson, and the young man crucified. And then she goes on to say further down, no planet knows that this our wayside planet bears as chief treasure one forsaken grave. And then she finishes off. Nor in this our little day may his devices with the heavens be guessed, his pilgrimage to thread the Milky Way or his bestowals there be manifest, but in the eternities, doubtless we shall compare together, hear a million alien gospels, in what guise he trod the Pleiades, the lyre, the bear. Oh, be prepared, my soul, to read the inconceivable, to scan the myriad forms of God, those stars unroll, when in our turn we show to them a man. That expanded my mind when I first read it into the knowledge that God is so much greater than we can imagine. We can already see a supercomputer able to look after the interests of millions of people on earth. Right now we've got them. And of course we're in the very beginning of computers. So if we can invent computers doing that, Surely God, the inventor of it all, is much more. And here's another thing from, I think, um, what's his name? Um, Sidney Carter had read the poem by Alice Maynard when he wrote the carol, which you probably know, every star shall sing a carol, because it's the same idea. And here's the verses that, that matter. Who can tell what other cradle high above the Milky Way still may rock the King of Heaven on another Christmas day? Who can count how many crosses still to come or long ago crucify the King of Heaven? Holy is the name I know. And she finishes, no, he said, is Sydney. Every star and every planet, every creature high and low Come and praise the King of Heaven by whatever name you know. In other words, one day we shall enter into a, a scene like something out of Star Trek with that extraordinary cafe, or is it cafe at the end of the world, uh, where you've got beings from all sorts of planetary systems, some swimming in green tanks of methane gas and others perfectly normal, but you know, looking more like elephants than human beings. Um, we shall enter into the mystery of God's creation with the angels. And that's where I'm trying to come back to, because the angels are the only extraterrestrials we have met. They're the only extraterrestrials the Christian faith teaches 
Mary had her visit from Gabriel. Jesus was comforted in the desert and in the Garden of Gethsemane by an angel. The shepherds heard them caroling in the sky. The women of the resurrection, the first apostles, were told by angels to go and tell the others. Angels are extraterrestrials come to earth. And we have an awful lot more to learn. But that's pretty good to start with. If we have these angels working with us in the great harvest that's coming. And I'd like to finish by just saying that it's the writer to the Hebrews in, in the New Testament, the epistle to the Hebrews, who says, watch what you're doing. It didn't quite say it like that, but it, it meant, watch what you're doing, because some have entertained angels unawares. He said, practice hospitality. Forgot that bit. Practice hospitality, for some have entertained angels unawares. And when you think of the people on the border being turned away instead of our practicing hospitality, we may be turning away angels. So think about that, how important our love and care and concern for the poor and the needy is, because we might be dealing, we are dealing with angels. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. of October, you will be hearing from individual St. Marians offering their own stewardship moments, a testimony to why they are members of this parish and why they support the work of this parish with their time, their talent, and their treasure. Today we will hear from Vanessa Albert Lowry, Rector's Warden and a member of St. Mary's since 1985. As you listen to Vanessa's statement, I hope that you will prayerfully consider how you can support the work of our parish in 2021 and fill out a pledge card which we'll be collecting virtually by November 1st. Good morning. When I was asked to put together a stewardship moment for today, I was a little worried. What does one say in this odd time when we don't use our space in the same way, when we're not together physically? But I, I think I think there is stuff that we must do together and that, that's what this little moment is really about. This past six months, or six months plus really, have given us all material to reflect upon in answering the following question. What is St. Mary's worth to each of us and to us collectively, communally? 
This time has made it clear to me that while our sanctuary is lovely and I miss being there, and by the way, it still needs us and we still need it. We, the members of the parish, are the church and we are held together by the strength of God's love that fuels our communal energy. This communal energy has kept me going during lockdown and the social distancing we are now experiencing. And through the hor horrific episodes of police brutality and its aftermath, we uphold one another through grace and love and make manifest right now in emails, calls, texts, waves and action, our love for each other and for the world. Yes, every week, and many weeks, more than once a week, I see the hands, feet and strength of Christ at work through all of us. We are all giving of our time and talent in new ways. For this, I'm grateful. Prior to lockdown, I had my daily periods of prayer and reflection built into times of trolley riding and arrival at work, quiet times before breakfast. Sadly, this has been very difficult for me to replicate in this time of staying home. The services Mother Mary Claire and Deacon Barbara have held daily uplift me spiritually now, even though I cannot usually attend. It is as if we are all together in a silent, unformed prayer that our clergy, through grace, tra transform into words and present for us as our daily offering of worship. There is so much for us all to be grateful for in the midst of this suffering and work as well. For these reasons and more, I know that we must continue to build the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven here and now, and through grace and without fear, we must be bold disciples. I pray that our works will, through grace, multiply and thrive. We must all reflect on what we can contribute and not hold back, but give knowing that together we will move forward even in this time, particularly in this time. Thank you.
Now we will affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Today, October 4th, is St. Francis Day. Francis cared fervently for the church, the earth and its animals, peace, and the poor. Let us now pray for these concerns, responding to each petition with the words, in mercy, receive our prayers. God most high, we pray for the church, for our bishop, our priests and deacons, and for our own congregation, for the ministry of Pope Francis, for the work of Franciscan friars and sisters, and for the churches that are struggling with few resources. That all the baptized may produce good fruit, sowing faith where there is doubt, we pray to you, O God, our Redeemer. In mercy, receive our prayers. We pray for the earth and its animals, for farmlands, for animals whose habitat is threatened, for livestock, for all the animals that we raise for human use, for service animals, and for our dear pets. That the earth may be sustained with your care, and that we will sow joy where there is sadness, we pray to you, O God, our Creator. In mercy, receive our prayers. We pray for peace between nations, in our cities, among the political rivals, throughout our coming election, between generations, between longtime citizens and new immigrants, in our churches and in our homes. That we may become instruments of your peace, sowing union where there is discord, we pray to you. O oh God, our peacemaker, in mercy, receive our prayers. We pray for those who are poor, for those who are unemployed, for migrants, for those who are marginalized by prejudice, for orphans, for school children with no digital access, that we may give assistance where there is poverty and need, we pray to you. Our God, O oh God, our provider. In mercy, receive our prayers. We pray for all who are suffering, for those laid low by the coronavirus, for those who, like Francis, have painful eye disease, for those living with anxiety, for those whose sorrow is known only to you, for those who will die this day, and for those whose names we call out to you here. That we may sow hope where there is despair, we pray to you, 
O God, our Comforter. In mercy, receive our prayers. We pray finally for ourselves. Strengthen our faith in Christ and hear our personal petitions. that we may so pardon where there is injury and love where there has been hatred, we pray to you, O God, our healer. In mercy, receive our prayers. We praise you, God most high, for all the faithful who have gone before us into the fullness of your life. That at our end, where there is darkness, we will join in your light forever. We pray to you, O oh God, eternal one. In your mercy, receive our prayers. And fold in your loving arms all for whom we pray, as we trust in your salvation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Almighty and ever-living, lasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits of mediation of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we'll say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day, and remain with you always. Amen. 
Thank you so much for joining us today for our service of morning prayer with sermon and music. A big thank you to the very Reverend Canon Gordon Reed, our guest preacher today. And a big thank you to all of the hands that made this video possible. I hope that you will join us following the final hymn and the postlude for our St. Mary's Zoom coffee hour. The connection information for that coffee hour is available in the links in the comments to this video. Please do mark your calendars as well for our first in-person service since early March, coming up next Sunday, October 11th at 2 p.m. We will be gathering at St. Mary's for an outdoor brief communion only service, which will really only last about 15 minutes as a chance for us to gather together in our masks and at a safe distance, share the sacrament and prepare for the season that is to come. We hope that this will be a monthly service, um, but that all depends on our local infection rates. So you will need to pre-register for this service. Please go to our St. Mary's at Penn.org website or our Facebook page here, and you can find all of the information that you need, both to prepare for this service and to register for it. We'll have to cap the service at 75 people, so please do register and note how many people will be coming with you. All of the details and all of the instructions for that service will be e-blasted as well this week in our e-newsletter and will be available here on our Facebook page and on our parish website. If you would like to make an offering in support of our life and ministry at St. Mary's, you can do so at the St. Mary's at Penn.org website using our PayPal donate button. And I look forward to seeing you here at 11 a.m. next week for our virtual service and, if possible, at our 2 p.m. in-person service of communion. Bye-bye. Scourged.